What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Logic Car, and we are going to just jump right into it. We are on level 25, actually we're on level 26, we've beaten level 25, and one thing I just noticed is, check it out, look, the, the side view mirrors are not attached to the car. That is the number one problem with why we can't drive very well. So anyway, Logic Car, really simple game, program this car to do cool stuff, um, including swing like a ninja, but we haven't actually gotten to that point yet. So... Have to get this car to the flag. Um, pretty simple stuff, actually. What do we got here? We got a burster. What is this? Is this a picker and loader? Memory write and memory read. Oh my god. Oh god. The game has memory. Let's go. That's actually amazing. Alright, so I'm assuming if we just start with the edge and we're going to drive into the cliff, right? Is that... Okay, fantastic. So we need a burst at the right time. Uh, so we need an air burster down. Right, and we probably need to air burst down when the obstacle sensor above us senses something. So if the obstacle sensor above us is greater than zero, right, that senses something. And once again, we write a lovely little while loop. The while loop goes like this. And I'm going to assume that this isn't going to work because this is going to sense the first rock that we see here. It's going to sense this rock right here. And we're going to jump here and it's going to be early. So we need to probably sense the second or the third rock would be my guess using some memory but let's see what happens here right yeah absolutely useless okay so we need to sense the third rock so what we're gonna have to do is somehow do some nonsense memory stuff so i know what we got to do we got to basically evaluate the memory condition so we got to write a value to memory right and then we got to keep writing the value to memory every time this is false so when it's false we rewrite a value to memory and the value we write to memory is going to be based on the obstacle sensor. So, oh boy, how do we, hold on, hold on a minute. We're going to need two while loops. Okay, so it's really simple, right? I think. So we go while loop like this, right? Obstacle sensor, if the upward sensor is greater than zero, then we can write a value to memory. If the obstacle sensor is less than zero, we're going to loop back and, and reevaluate our conditions. Um, so if the obstacle sensor is greater than zero, we write a value into memory and the value is going to be equal to the memory read plus one right i think that's what we do memory read plus one and then we write that into value so that's going to be adding whatever we have in memory to another value so it's memory plus one each time and this branch node has to check if the memory read is greater than two right because if the memory read is greater than two then that means we have gone through two rocks and we're on the third and if it's not greater than two we have to loop all the way back to the start oh it can do that perfect so this one loops back into that branch node as well so we start we drive our engine we count twice with this nonsense and if that is true we burst down so on the third wait how's that gonna work hold on we memory write and then it's gonna go here it's gonna check and it's gonna say it's greater than two yeah okay this should work right nope Wait, what? Did it, like, add, like, 60 numbers to that? How... F oh, God. Oh, no. It's looping back too fast. Actually, this is... This is okay. It's incrementing at a certain speed. So, all we need to do is it's adding... Well, we just need to change this number to, like, 300. Or, like, 100. Can I go to 100? 100. Let's see what that does. Maybe that's the issue. Because it'll just... It'll just keep incrementing this, like, a million times. So it gets up to 5 per rock. 16. See that? So it keeps... It's just incrementing. That's fine. We don't need a timer. So it gets up to 16. So let's go at 15. I'm trying to use my num lock here. There we go. 15. Perfect. Alright. So now it'll go... 1 to 5. 11. There we go. 15. And it jumps. That's actually amazing. Okay. So it's a memory loop. I, I should make a timer somehow. I don't really know how to make timers in this game. Look at that. Perfect. Every time. Alright, so this level, I think, is the same thing. We've got, um... We've got some stuff. We've got to put the chests at the flags, and then we've got to grab the third chest and go with the car to this third flag. So I think all we have to do is go in reverse, pick up these chests, and throw them forward into the pit. And then... Grab the third chest and not throw it, I think. But let's... Let's see what this does first. Let me just see what happens if I go in reverse. Right, so engine mode, negative one pretty simple stuff there 
Okay, and then let's just have- wait, hold on. We can put the picker on all the time. Launcher there, picker here. So picker on all the time. It's just, you know, it's always going to pick up something if there's something for it to pick up. That's not a problem. And then engine one, negative one. So we're going to go in reverse. And then launcher full power. Um, yeah, and let's just loop this back to itself. So it's just going to keep launching at full power. Let's see what this actually does. So reverse. Oh, right. The Oh, shoot. That's right, the launcher doesn't have forward momentum, it only takes the momentum of the car. Actually, there's a really easy way to do this. Hold on, if I just push this in reverse, I am think I'm doing this wrong. Rather than have the car... Okay, here's my thought, right? You need to have one flag, one chest, and the car has to pick up a chest. But rather than have the car go all the way back to this flag, what if we have the car just push this chest into that flag, throw this one in front of it, and then grab this one and drive into the this is actually so much easier we don't even need the memory for this i don't think let me just see what happens if i do this mode engine negative one this might actually be the easiest solution ever there are a lot of times when i noticed in the in the yeah look it picks up that chest okay i noticed in the comments i did a lot of things really stupid like sometimes i'll pick the wrong destination for the car and everyone points out like con there's an easier way to do that and i don't know why you're not doing it the easier way so all we got to record here is the obstacle sensor if the forward obstacle sensor is greater than a certain number um, then we're far enough away, right? And we can flip the engine mode. So I don't, I don't even think I need memory for this. I, I like, I was thinking of a super complicated way to do it, count the number of boxes, all that nonsense. But I honestly think I can just do this with a branch node, um, and just a couple of loop conditions. So if this is greater than, I don't know, like 50, right? Is that, is that, how far are you? You are 50, like almost instantly. Okay, hold on. Um, so if it's greater than, I don't know, like, 75, right? Then we're gonna turn the engine around and go in the other direction. Just for now, just to see what the range on that is. But we still need to launch it. Okay, so it's there. So that's good. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go launch it forward. And then again, we're gonna do this in a really, really terrible, but, like, really easy way. So then we do this and do another check. And we do it with the forward sensor is less than 50 now right then we can execute the next portion of the loop or the next portion of the the track which is to launch the stupid thing nope not pick it to launch it right and that'll launch it forward and then once we launch it forward we have to once again turn the engine in reverse right to go back and pick up the other one and then that engine in reverse stays for another branch node. Again, terrible way to do this. The smart way to do this would be to have it store value in memory, count the number, and for each one, repeat the same steps. So go reverse, pick up the object, go forward, throw the object, go reverse, pick up the object, go forward, throw the object, and then go in reverse. And if it's the third object, uh, continue going in reverse and don't bother throwing it and going forward. This way is incredibly stupid, but it'll still work. This should work, I, I think. This is a really bad way to do it, but... Look at that. Gets that one. Throws that one. Grabs that one. See? Easy. Perfect. Sometimes, sometimes there's better solutions. Yeah. No, that was, that was really good. That was really good. That took a lot less programming than if I had done it the other way. Pick that up. Full reverse. Yeah, no, originally I thought, you know, you gotta get the car to that flag, and I'm pretty sure that's probably what the dev intended, but, you know, the comments have shown me that doing stuff the way it's intended is not always the easiest. Um... What? What on earth? Okay, I have four cars, and I have five flags. Oh, it's on an elevator. Oh my goodness. I was like, how am I going to get the car way up there? Okay, so it's on an elevator, so they just have to be timed. Okay. Okay, first question. How many actual canvases do we have? Literally just one. Okay, so we have to write one code that handles all the stuff. Um, and obviously if we just put engine mode on one, they're all going to drive and get stuck, and that's not going to work. And then all else we got is an obstacle sensor radio messages and memory values all right i'm gonna try a really stupid solution that i don't i don't know if this is gonna work or not but here's gonna be the solution all we're gonna do is go do a check for obstacle sensor 
And if the forward obstacle sensor is greater than a value, we're going to move forward. And it's going to be stupid because when this car starts moving, it's going to see that these bricks are too far away. So it's going to start moving. And then this one's going to start moving. But then we're going to have when the obstacle sensor is less than zero, so it doesn't see anything, to just hard break. Or no, less than a certain value to hard break. Yeah, that's what we're going to have to do. All right, so this is going to be... This is going to be interesting. I don't know if this is going to work. This is a tough one. I'm thinking, like, the intended way I would imagine is to count the barrels. Right? Like, because these are the only things you can see are these. So maybe count that. But anyway, um, so here's what we're going to do. Start. Right? Branch node again. Loop this back. Uh, obstacle sensor is greater than a value of 20. I don't know if that's going to be enough. Whatever. A value of 20. Uh, then you can drive the engine. And then... Oh boy. Uh, and then a branch node here. And if obstacle sensor is less than a value of 10... Uh, we don't have brakes. Of course we don't have brakes. Apply engine mode 0. Does that work? Maybe that'll break it. Uh, and if it's false... Uh, and it's not less than a value of 10. Loop back to here to start. And if this works, then go back to the very beginning. I don't know. I have no idea what this is going to do. Let's see. You guys are all absolute... You are absolutely terrible. Honestly, I think the biggest problem with this level is that you don't have multiple canvases. You have to have one canvas. So I'm trying to think of a way to delay it. Because you only want the one in front to go. And you want these other three to stay, but, like, how do you distinguish which one's the one in front? You can't specify if you see a barrel as an object, or if you see a car as an object. They're all interpreted as objects. And there's nothing else in here that would allow us to change that. All right, and we're back, and hopefully my mic is uh, still the same position and stuff. I actually took a break for like a week because this this problem frustrated me that much. And I, I you know, the problem only gives you a handful of parts. It, it gives you some memory read, memory writes, and distance sensors. And I, I did so many different solutions and none of them worked. To finally to the point where I got so frustrated, I talked to my girlfriend about it. She's actually a programmer. She's a very talented programmer. Uh, she makes her living as a programmer. And uh, she said, well, there's got to be an obvious solution. You're only on level 28. Which I took as not only a slap across the face, but obviously she's right. There is an obvious solution. And now I feel really, really stupid. So when I looked at this problem, finally, I realized, hold on a minute. There's five flags and only four cars. And I that was the key for me. Because once you understand that then everything makes sense originally i was trying to have the first car go to the first flag second car to second flag so on and so forth but the really easy solution and even this solution is excessive because i can delete this whole front thing but the really easy solution is really simple the cars can see the barrels and they can see other cars but they can't see this gap in between you can see this has no uh is obstacle flag on it like these do right they say is obstacle so this car sees the barrel, so all we gotta do is say, okay, listen, you're not allowed to drive unless you first see empty space, and then you see the barrel. And the reason why is this car sees the barrel, then it sees empty space, and then it sees the barrel, so it'll drive. But this car is constantly seeing this car in front of it, so it'll never drive until this car's gone. And then once the first car's gone, the second car will see this next empty space, and then drive, and so on and so forth, and we can repeat the pattern. And so it's really, really easy. I have this entire branch, the beginning, to say you have to first see a barrel, then not see a barrel, then see a barrel. But this is honestly, like, this whole thing can just be deleted. And we just go start straight over to here. And this is, like, the simplest solution. She literally told me, she's like, you know, like, there's got to be a simple solution because there's no way that the dev would make something super complicated, like, halfway through the game, right? So, anyway, this is going to work. It's it's quite amazing. So, it first sees that there's no obstacle, and then there's an obstacle, so it goes. Now, this one sees no obstacle, and then it sees an obstacle, so it's allowed to go. And then this one sees no obstacle, and then it sees an obstacle, so it's allowed to go. And then finally, the top one sees no obstacle, and then it sees an obstacle, and it's allowed to go. Literally weeks! Literally weeks! And I couldn't figure out this stupid problem. It drove me nuts! 
Originally what I was doing is I was using memory indexes. So I was saying when the first car goes, once it sees the barrel within a certain range, it fires a value in memory back to the next car. And then the next car has to see the barrel in range, but they were all getting piled up at different spots. And it was the most frustrating experience in the world. And I'm just, I'm so mad about it. I'm so mad that there was just an easy, simple, you know, freaking five node solution, two branch nodes, one right after the other. That's it. Two comparisons. Less than zero, greater than 15. Like, it could have even been less than zero, greater than zero. It's so easy. I, ju I just feel, I feel so stupid. Anyway, that's what programming is. Sometimes the simplest solution is actually the easiest and the best. Next level. We're gonna have a better time this time. It's three cars. They have to go to three flags. Simple enough. All right, so we got two canvases. And for sensors, we have an obstacle sensor and an angle sensor. And then we've got this nonsense. Send message, receive message, write to memory, and read memory. See, in the last level, they gave us all these, and it was all just a red herring. Whatever you want to call it, it's just a joke. You didn't need it. It was a joke. I literally, I'm not even joking, guys. I spent a week. I recorded the first half of this video, like, quite literally a week ago from when I'm recording the second half. And now I'm just really mad about it. Because... It was so obvious, and I came back to it a couple times every other day or so, just like, hmm, maybe I'll come at the problem from a fresh start. Stupid. It was stupid. It was so easy. I don't even know why I'm playing this game anymore. It honestly was like the easiest solution in the world. So I'm going to do this with the easiest solution as well. Um, I think there's two canvases because quite simply, we're going to have these cars go backwards until the angle is shallow, and then they're going to go forwards. Because when this level starts, I'm pretty sure, yeah, see this bridge comes up slowly, and that bridge falls. So all we need to do is have them go back far enough and then go forward once the bridge is up and, and it'll be fine. So let's let's just see what happens. First of all, let's give them all. They're all going to be canvas one to start. What happens if I just give them a mode negative one with the engine? Does this just send them all backwards? And of course, how far backwards do they actually go? Yeah, there we go. That's not that doesn't seem fast enough. I'm going to assume that it's down. So it's probably a negative angle. So let's say angle sensor is greater than or equal to zero, right? And then if that's the case, that's true. And when that's true, uh, we're going to trigger the engine to go into just neutral, like literally just coast mode. And let's see what this does. So this one's probably going to go first. Oh, perfect. Oh, that's good. That's, that's angle sensor one point. Oh, it, it actually is a positive. Is that actually serious? Is it a positive? Negative 27. Oh, it only went greater than or equal to... Okay, hold on. Greater than or equal to negative uh, 2. There we go. Let's try this. We need it to basically still be on a down slope. Good. You guys are... You guys are... Okay, so you're turning off your engine. Alright, what if you set the to mode 1? So they're turning off the engine, but they're still coasting. We don't have brakes. Which is unfortunate, but let's see how far this goes. Reverse. Oh, we literally can't... <laughs> Okay, hold on. Negative five. They literally can't even under... They're going... There's no way you have that much reverse torque, bud. Okay, well, the one... The one sacrificed himself for the greater good of humanity. Negative seven, maybe. So, basically, this one, we want to start going in reverse... In forward first, because it obviously... There we go. No. Oh, I see. Oh, I see the problem. Okay, well, this is actually, this is an easy fix. These ones can be a little bit different. Instead of using the angle sensor, uh, we're just going to do these with a distance sensor. And we'll say when the distance backwards is less than, like, one, that means a car is ramming it from behind. And then we can trigger it that way. So that actually works. So the front two cars, when the back one starts pushing, they're going to go, and the back one triggers on the angle itself. So this should go like this. And then chain reaction. They all go forward. And that's enough. Push the box. Don't even care. Are you... Are you actually kidding me? Are you... Are you for real? Alright, I have an idea. What if the first two cars go into neutral? Instead of acceleration. So there's only the back car pushing everybody. So when they get pushed, they just stop going in reverse. Now it'll go a little bit slower. Oh, they really pick up speed. Holy cow. Okay, hold on, hold on. We need to get we need to get all three of them in neutral. Okay, this is actually it's so neutral is the way to go. So then this one, uh, we can have it trigger neutral as well. Just need to add another condition to the back one. So the back one, um, when it's forward sensor, 
No, not that. What's well, angle sensor? Right, we'll do angle sensor again. So when it's angle sensor ends up being less than uh negative five again, then you can trigger this true and that'll turn your engine back into a neutral mode to pick up speed faster. Apparently neutral down the hill is way faster than driving down the hill, which is interesting, but here we go. This'll work. Uh Try negative 10. There we go. Now they all turn off. Perfect. That's so sick. That's so cool. I guess that's why they wanted two canvases, because you need these two to turn off. I can't believe they go so fast. Oh, that's awesome. Alright, next level. Apparently level 30 is the last level, or or something else. Um this looks pretty easy. I think all we gotta do is have this car go in reverse, trigger the button. There's a, okay, there's a trophy up top there, and there's one down below. So we just have to have the car go in reverse, push this block um, into that trophy. Okay, this is easy enough to do. I could pick this up and throw it, right? But if I pick it up and throw it, is that gonna work? What if I, hold on, I got an idea. What if I do this? What if I go picker is true, so it's just always gonna pick it up. Right, we're gonna start in reverse, which is normal. So we're gonna pick something up all the time. That's gonna work fine. We're gonna go in reverse, which is fine. Maybe we can launch the box like behind the trophy and then back up until we see the box. Uh, but let's see what this does though. So the picker's always set. Pick up the box. You didn't launch it though. But we can still push that. Oh, actually, hold on. This works great. This works great. So we can, if we pick up the box right away, right? Then we pick up the box, and then we just gotta check and see when we have something above us and nothing behind us. Alright, I'm gonna try something a little weird here. I don't know if this is gonna do anything. I'm gonna go put the engine in neutral if the angle sensor is less than zero. So basically, as soon as we start going backwards... Oh, it's going to sense that right away. Herp derp. Okay, uh, less than five. There we go. So as soon as we start going backwards, um... Uh... Greater than five? What? Is that... There we go. And then it coasts. Okay. Perfect. And then if we have the picker always enabled here... I mean, we can enable the picker here, I guess. It doesn't really matter. Now we just got to understand... When I can trigger this engine to turn on again. Holy, look at- What? What? Hold- Wait, what? Can it do that every time? No. Why did it only do that the one time? Is there a way- Maybe if I give it less speed. What if angle is less than four? Greater than- Greater than like three. Can- Is there a way for me to turn off the engine? Like just a nudge in reverse? Oh. If I can get it to like less than two? If I can get it to just nudge it in reverse. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. And then when we... And okay, okay, okay. This is excellent. And then we could turn the engine on, right? When the angle sensor is flat. Let's move this over here. So we can turn it on when the angle sensor is flat and you don't sense anything behind you. So obstacle sensor behind is uh, less than zero, right? A is less than B. So when it's less than zero... And your angle sensor is, uh, you know, equal to less than, I don't know, we can do less than one degree probably. Right? There we go, perfect. So when those are both true, then we can trigger the branch node to continue on the next step. Let's, um, this is gonna get really gross, really fat. Let's just move this out of the way a bit. I don't know, whatever. That's fine. This is this is fine. This should work, right? It's just a giant sequence of things. So drop down. That one was bad. It's not going to be enough. Oh, it still was. Look at that. Full speed. Oh my god. That was... Okay. Uh, obviously greater than like five degrees. Greater than zero. As soon as it launched the box, it gave itself like a huge angle. Alright, there we go. Perfect. Shoots that. Nitro. Uh, what? How do I? How am I supposed to get up that hill? All right. So, 
I think I've got a solution here, but just like a lot of things in this game, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So it took a bit, but basically we're doing exactly what I thought. So we pick up everything automatically, we go in reverse, we fall down, we have a triple condition here to pass through. The triple condition is really simple. The angle's got to be flat, so we got to be on the flat ground, we're not tumbling. The backwards obstacle sensor is less than two, which means we're about to see that trophy. And then the upwards obstacle sensor is greater than zero, which means we picked up the box. Um, I had some issues without this condition where it just would basically like start driving right away. Terrible idea. Anyway, when all three of those conditions are true, then we turn on the engine, hit full nitro. And then when the up backwards sensor is greater than 25, so we're 25 away from the trophy, then we launch the box and trigger the engine in reverse. And this worked once, but I overshot the box. So I've adjusted the power and we'll see if it works this time. Goes backwards. See, now it doesn't... See, it didn't want to work. And now it didn't want to launch. See, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's try it again. It, I don't know why that time it doesn't trigger on the obstacle, even though it's there. You can see obstacle sensor. I don't understand this game. Oh, see, that time it worked. Look. But it wasn't enough on the box, you see? If we can just launch the box a little bit harder. So let's adjust it. See, I don't understand why it, why it worked the one time. It's like it doesn't trigger on the trophy all the time. I'm not exactly sure. This is so hard to do. It's like the perfect balancing act to get the exact amount of power to hit that trophy. But the car can't make it up there. Like, there's no way. Now, I know it might seem ridiculous. But I came across the proper solution by accident. And once again... It was more obvious than the previous ones. Still takes a whole buttload of logic. So what we're doing, I'm, you know, I'm just going to, I'm not even going to explain what it does. I'm just going to show you guys what it does. I was adjusting the distance before we were backing up, picking this up, and I was adjusting the distance from the cup, and something magical happened. I found if I didn't tell it to ever, um, you know, ever eject the box, and it went up the ramp with the box... Uh, you could eject the box in midair, and you end up with just a very magical experience. So, I'm going to show you guys what happens first. So, we grab the box, we go in reverse, we push this trophy into the flag. Then we go forward, hit the boost, eject ourselves. <laughs> that was a bad one. It, oh, is it going to make it? There we go. See, and then it just, it just you know, goes on its merry way. So, it, <laughs> sometimes the ejection is a little bit better. That was pretty bad. Um, so what we're doing is we're going exactly that. We're going in reverse, and then we do a triple logical check again with all this nonsense. But basically we're checking, you know, again, the angle sensor, absolute value, floor is equal to zero, which basically means the angle is less than one or negative one degree, right? And if that's true, and the backward sensor is less than or equal to zero, or less than zero, sorry, which means it's negative one, so it doesn't see anything behind it, and the upward sensor is equal to zero, which means we have something on top of us, we have the box, then we can turn on the engine full forward, and then we only turn on the nitro when the angle sensor is greater than two, which means we're starting to go up the ramp, and then we turn on the launcher, we launch the box, when our angle sensor is greater than 135 degrees, it was 140. So basically, once the car is upside down, you launch the box off. So that's what propels you forward. So let's see if we can get a better launch here. What a stupid solution. It's so awesome. But I never thought of it until I accidentally had it happen once. There we go. That was a good launch. Come on, grab the... Oh, you suck. Okay, hold on. Let's do 130. But yeah, I had it happen once because the old setup kind of got to the same solution, but in a really janky way. And I had it go up the ramp and then launch the box once. And I was like, oh my God, I can make an actual solution out of it. And then it took forever to actually write this solution, like to, to get the logic to it. It did take a fair amount of time, um, which is why I actually paused recording. Look at that. That was really, really good. But I had to pause the recording because it was just taking so freaking long to actually get all the angles right and the perfect, you know, setup. But this is actually amazing. I can't believe this works. Look at that. Go. Full fly. Flip. Perfect. And actually, look, it unlocked more stages. So let's check out what the next stage is. We're obviously not going to do it in this episode. But let's see what stage 31 is. Oh, we're on to some desert tiles. I don't... What is that? What the heck is that thing? What is that? Traffic light can be red. Oh my god. Oh, there's we gotta read traffic lights. That's amazing. Well, definitely next episode. It's cool that there's a new like desert biome and uh, you know level 31. If we go back to the main menu, 
we're actually pretty close to halfway down the game. There you go, 30 of 55. So we're over halfway down the game. But let me know what you guys think of this game in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.